The Israeli military says it has taken control of a Hamas military stronghold in the northern Gaza Strip. The IDF says troops struck two cells as well as a number of militants. Dozens of Hamas mortar launchers were hit and naval forces struck posts containing unidentified technological assets. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel will have overall security responsibility in Gaza for an indefinite period after the war. He also expressed openness to little pauses in the fighting to facilitate the release of hostages. Well, Israel launched another wave of strikes across Gaza today. In the south, an airstrike destroyed several homes in the town of Khan Yunus. An Associated Press journalist says at least five people were killed, three of them children. The Palestinian death toll has reportedly surpassed 10,000 with more than 2,300 missing. About 1,400 people in Israel have died, mostly civilians killed in the October 7th terror attack by Hamas. Well, joining us now is former NATO Task Force Commander Major General Dennis Thompson with more on the Israel-Hamas war. Thank you so much for joining us, Major General. I want to get your uh, reaction to the news that uh, Canadians are now being allowed to cross the Rafah crossing. Well, it's clearly good news. 80 Canadians that managed to get out of harm's way, if you will, from the Gaza Strip is, is definitely good news. Going out the Rafah gate, means that they're uh, on a highway that leads straight to Cairo and and uh, as indicated in the previous report, reporting, obviously they'll be in a position to get back here to Canada. So uh, kudos for uh, Global Affairs Canada for negotiating this departure. Yeah, and we heard from uh, Melanie Jolie thanking her Israeli, Egyptian and Qatari counterparts, but um, didn't thank Hamas. Uh, who was not involved in this. Does it surprise you at all that a terrorist organization uh, was not involved in, in, in the evacuation of, of its people? Well, they clearly were involved. The Qataris would have spoken to, we're not talking to Hamas, but the Qataris are, and clearly there would have had to have been some dialogue between them because they own the other half of the, the Rafa crossing. So I think uh, uh, the Qataris is exactly why Madame Jolie thank them is because the Qataris were the ones that, that conducted the negotiation necessary to get those Canadians out. I want to talk about the, the challenges right now uh, when it comes to, you know, the Israelis as they make their, as they continue to move forward in, into northern Gaza. We're seeing uh, some obviously heavy bombardments, uh, but we're also seeing some new footage that's been released on the IDF uh, Twitter page of uh, rocket launchers that are embedded in mosques into children's playgrounds uh, from, a, I guess, a, a tactical point of view, how difficult is it to, to, to strike these targets and at the same time trying to minimize uh, civilian casualties? Well, therein lies the conundrum that Hamas, Hamas has presented Israel with. If you put those weapon systems inside cultural sites or sites that are typically banned under the law of armed conflict to strike, you then actually put them at, you put those sites at risk. And Israel has the right to strike a target if it's, if it's uh, hiding a weapon system as clearly Hamas has done. But this is precisely what asymmetric warfare is all about. You do your best to uh, to use the rules that we follow against us in order to to uh, to harm your enemy. And that's precisely what Hamas has done here. And from what we're hearing, there's still about 100,000 or so people that are still stuck in the north. Um, many of them have yet to, to heed the call to flee south. Uh, some of them are being held essentially by Hamas and not being allowed to leave. Um, when it comes to trying to evacuate that portion of, of this region, uh, talk about those, uh, those challenges and, and also the challenge for, I guess, the Israelis to, to continue to avoid those civilian casualties. Right. So what they will need to do and, and what Israel is doing is clearing the uh, Gaza City neighborhood by neighborhood in a meticulous fashion. So the buildings, the ruins and the tunnels underneath. And uh, if the civilians are still in place, then they need to be even more prudent as they clear through because they'll, they'll have to avoid to the extent possible civilian casualties and actually protect them. So as they clear through, those civilians should be left behind obviously they'll be searched etc to make sure they're not they don't pose a threat and they then the uh, the other half of the Israeli army that's in the uh, Gaza city that remains behind the front lines will be occupying those sites and they become an army of occupation in essence and there are obligations that uh, the Israeli army will assume this is why I find Mr. Netanyahu's comment about staying for an indefinite period of time 
somewhat interesting because he will assume a whole bunch of responsibilities as a, re as a result of that. Uh, Major General, what's your take on what's happening in the North? We know that the, the U.S. has sent uh, military vessels to act as a deterrent, but we are seeing cross-border um, uh, fighting between uh, the uh, terrorist organization Hezbollah and the IDF. Uh, what are your concerns about uh, the situation uh, continuing to grow uh, in the North and how that could impact this, this conflict? The real reason that those carrier battle groups are there is, uh, well, it's deterrence, as you mentioned, but it's to deter Iran and Hezbollah. Those are the two biggest actors. It will not deter the small, the small uh, militias that are in the area. Yes, there's some fire from uh, Hezbollah, but there are also elements of Hamas in southern Lebanon that are firing on Israel. And of course, there are militias in Iraq and Syria that are firing on American bases. And so those carrier battle groups are there as a warning to Iran and to Hezbollah that you don't want to up the game. You don't want, we don't want this uh, conflict to escalate. And it's certainly not to their benefit to escalate it because what this conflict has done is driven together a whole bunch of disparate elements from across the region, including uh, Shiites in, in Iran, uh, Sunnis in, Sau in Saudi Arabia, et cetera. And now the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And all these people who were once bickering with each other are now unified in their uh, opposition to Israel. So they don't need to, to, uh, to, to escalate this war uh, at this point. And lastly, Major General, before I let you leave, um, given the fact that there's still about 240 hostages uh, being held by Hamas, uh, what do you think the likeliness of success uh, for the Israelis are to, to, to rescue those hostages? It's an extremely difficult and complex problem. First of all, you have to find them, and uh, they've, uh, you know, they've only found one so far, uh, at least that we're aware of, that's been uh, successfully rescued. And uh, no doubt that the, they are cached away in the tunnel systems, and many of them, I would assume, are in the southern part of the Gaza Strip. So again, it's going to take specialized troops um, operating in a prudent and meticulous fashion in in order to avoid the hostages being killed. And that's a tall order when there's over 240 of these hostages. NATO Task Force Commander, Major, former NATO Task Force Commander, Major General Dennis Thompson, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me.